Since I was a young man, I had always aspired to one day serve the town of Phillipsburg in a public capacity. In November of 2017, the overwhelming majority of the town's voters had placed their trust into me to do just that. I and my colleagues, Mr. McVeigh and Ms. DiGiraldo, promised full transparency into the inner workings of our town government. We did this during our campaign, and along with our fellow councilmen, have attempted to provide that during our tenure. However, as of late, my sense is that the public believes that nothing is getting done, or that council is stalling progress. While it may be true that nothing is getting done, it is not due to the action or inaction on the part of council. Rather, it is the direct result of the administration adopting a my way or highway approach to govern without regard for a process. Because the administration operates behind the scenes and the council in public, and because we hold confidences, our town charter, and the responsibility of our sworn duties in the highest regard, the public has largely been presented with a one-sided, or in many cases, fabricated story. I truly believe in the power of positive change by means of cooperation, collaboration, and community involvement. And we hit the ground running immediately after being sworn in, intent on fulfilling our campaign promises. We knew we would find obstacles and hurdles along the way, but had never imagined the type of resistance and secrecy that we would be dealing with on a consistent and daily basis. Still, we will work diligently to serve our residents in every capacity possible. For years, the town of Phillipsburg has always been referred to as possessing a good old boy system. It's been referred to as being morally corrupt, and there has always been a general sense of distrust between the residents of Phillipsburg and their municipal officials. I never understood why until I myself bore witness to this as a sworn public official. As many of you know who have been following Phillipsburg politics over the years, the mayor, almost immediately after taking office in 2016, encouraged the council to rewrite the town code to remove the personnel files from the municipal clerk's office. And this was a very contentious issue, as in the state of New Jersey, the municipal clerk's statutory duties are comprised with being the keeper of all records. In 2018, we had reversed this piece of code and had requested the records and files be transferred back to the municipal clerk's office. And the, and the mayor refused to comply for a year and two months, despite his many promises to do so. Most recently, he had directed employees to relocate some of those files to the clerk's office, and she had emailed him to state that some files were in fact missing. On February 6, 2019, I was included in an electronic exchange between the Phillipsburg Municipal Clerk and Mayor Stephen R. Ellis regarding the subject of missing files. In this exchange, the mayor stated, there are no personnel files for council, past or present. From previous conversations with the mayor, I found his statement to be false and became suspicious of his behavior. Therefore, I took it upon myself to file an OPA request with the Municipal Clerk on February 7, 2019 for all public documents in the personnel files of the current council and our predecessors. While fulfilling this request, found in the folder of former council president Todd Jersicki was a personnel action form for January 3, 2018, two days after he was no longer in office. This path form was designating him as being retired due to being incompetent. It was signed by Mayor Ellis and a town employee. Attached to that path form, was a port partial release of a former news article released by the Express Times in 2011. It was outlining some legal issues of the former council president. On the bottom of that piece of paper were handwritten notes by the mayor making comments about the former council president and his behavior. These notes were eerily reminiscent of the infamous blackboard scrawls that appeared in the mayor's office in 2018, which would list out certain actions that myself and my counterparts had either taken or had said publicly. And as odd as that may sound, that was not the most difficult find. Directly behind that piece of paper was an email dated January 1st, 2017, written by a former sitting councilman to someone in the mayor's office. Directly beneath that email content was a handwritten note indicating that such a councilman offered the mayor a raise in exchange for a position for his wife or providing her with a raise. On the date of this discovery, 
The information was immediately reported to the Warren County Prosecutor's Office, and due to certain perceived conflicts of interest between the Prosecutor's Office and the Town of Phillipsburg, a request was made to have an outside agency investigate this matter. To date, no one has been contacted by the Prosecutor's Office regarding the matter. This is disheartening and affords too much room for speculation. On March 5th, 2018, while reviewing the matter further, there was enough reason to believe the content within the notation was true and factual. Therefore, I had interviewed the mayor and another party without scheduling either conversation. During each interview, I left feeling let down by the very system I now represent and will continue to fight so hard to correct. Something definitely happened, and I am hopeful that law enforcement will take this matter seriously and treat it with the highest of importance, as the public should never be deceived and or taken advantage of by those who have been entrusted with their tax dollars. After confronting the mayor regarding the email, he approached the employee, referenced in the content, and attempted to ascertain what they may or may not know. He then sent out four internal memorandums. All four are included in your packages. Circular number one, had removed the clerk's ability to allow and or control access to the building's second floor where the mayor's office resides. Excuse me. I can only assume that this was done because I had requested the use of the clerk's key fob to visit with the mayor to interview him, and it may have caught him off guard. Circular number three was a direct request from the mayor to the clerk requesting to see my submitted over request for council's personnel folders, and then a directive that he is to be informed of all over requests immediately upon receipt. Why would the mayor wish to see this request? And more importantly, why is he now demanding to see every single OPA request received by this town upon submission? This is not a function of the mayor's office. I have provided each member of the press with information collecting re reflected regarding this matter, as it all is operable and public information. As your council president and elected representative, I am concerned. I am concerned about the integrity of the mayor's office and the inner workings that we are not privy to. I am concerned I, when a public official and or officials act in such a manner, it gives us all a bad reputation. And we have aimed to fight that stigma since January 1st, 2018. It is unfortunate that town business is being stalled by this type of behavior. But even more unfortunate is that no one is truly aware of what is really happening behind the scenes. To date, we have consistently been subjected to and witnesses of the retaliatory practices of the mayor when he feels threatened. We witnessed it when he sent a letter, a letter to a resident's workplace, requesting that she be reprimanded for sending over requests and ignoring her work hours. He identified himself as a public official and used that in an attempt to have this resident punished for exercising her constitutional right. We have witnessed the mayor threaten a resident publicly with the calling of the prosecutor's office because, as he had stated, you cannot say that a mayor did something wrong. And he did this because the residents spoke out against him during a public meeting. He taunts residents from the dais by blowing kisses and waving to them. We have received tons of threatening emails and text messages from the mayor since taking office, and we have stood up to him each and every time. He has sent out emails to the municipal staff forbidding them to speak with us and he has attempted to ban myself and Vice President McVeigh from the municipal building. <clears throat> He's made derogatory comments about Councilwoman DiGirolamo during a meeting because her opinion differed from his. We bore witness to his daily harassment of the clerk for simply doing her job, and he has refused to comply with the legally passed ordinances and resolutions out of pure spite. He's threatened our professional services via emails and text messages with conspiracy theories, and threatens to withhold their pay for doing their jobs. He's violated the code of ethics more times than I can count, and each time it gets worse. The unfortunate aspect of this all is that I have to stand here before you today and have this press conference. It was not something that I would have imagined would have been necessary, and I'm hopeful by this time next year, it won't be, because we will have a functioning government. I believe that I can speak for all of council when I convey that we want to see progress. We work diligently and constantly to answer our constituents and do our jobs. However, lately, we've been doing the mayor's job and ours, all the while working full-time jobs ourselves to take care of our families. Our streets haven't been paved in three years. Our spending has increased without explanation. 
Attempts at shoving unwarranted and unapproved bills down the throats of this governing body are becoming the norm. Complete disregard for the law is now common practice. The morale amongst residents and employees is the lowest that I have ever seen, and it seems that our mayor is under investigation almost daily, and he's already filed one lawsuit against us, and most recently has threatened to file another. These distractions are becoming commonplace, and it must stop. As Councilwoman DiGirolamo has expressed in a previous meeting, so much more would be able to get done if we would simply work together. But no matter how many attempts are made, or how much we attempt to work with the administration, history is consistently repeating itself. As a taxpayer, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because I want to see the positive change. As a councilman, I am frustrated. And I'm frustrated because no matter what we do, nothing is acknowledged and or enforced to achieve that positive change. Tonight, I will enter into an executive session with our council, and I will ask for their perspective on forming an ad hoc committee to investigate the content of the email discussed earlier, and in conjunction with an expected law enforcement investigation, Perhaps we can eradicate corruption from our local government by exposing it at its very core. No matter the outcome, our council majority has work to do. We will press forward, we will ignore the noise, and we will continue to lay the foundation for future elected mayors to enforce and finally clean up this town. Thank you. I will take questions if you have questions. If not, you're really welcome to email us. Are you guys accusing the mayor of committing a crime? I, w I, wouldn't, rec I wouldn't recommend answering that at this time. Uh, it's, it's not within our purview or expertise to determine that. I think Council President has said over and over time, uh, throughout his speech this evening that this will be turned over to authorities outside of Phillipsburg and preferably outside of Warren County. Uh, what will the ad hoc committee do if this is all being turned over to law enforcement? Well, I believe because of the perceived conflicts of interest for interest uh, for each for um, he hired a, a a new position, a police officer, right, to head up investigations. Um, unfortunately, that police officer is the former president of the Democratic Committee, so there are some conflicts of interest. So I do believe that the legislative branch should work in conjunction with an outside law enforcement agency. Does that mean the Attorney General's office? The Attorney General's Office Corruption Committee. Have you already approached them with this? We have. What was the response? Um, unfortunately, I'm forbidden to say. I'm not accusing the party of the police department of doing anything wrong. I'm just simply stating that it is, it is a conflict of interest. Uh, what about the former councilman mentioned in the emails? He will have to answer as well, but I can tell you that the note was not written by him nor his, uh, nor his wife. Uh, only three people would have had access to that document since it was locked in the mayor's office. That was the mayor and his two employees. Do have one question. Okay. Sure. I suppose what's next after all of this? Well, I would hope that uh, the truth somehow comes out, um, and that just as I had stated, that we will eradicate the corruption at its core. Um, for far too long, Phillipsburg politics. Before we had gotten in, um, I don't believe I've seen one councilman or mayor challenge, you know, this type of behavior. And if we were able to 
find this by accident, just by fulfilling a simple OVA request, how much more is there? So we're hopeful for a positive outcome. Um, we're hopeful that it's a wake-up call to politicians that will come after us to not partake in this type of behavior. Follow-up to that. Yes. Uh, you've already taken the no confidence vote in the mayor. Yeah. Is another one coming? I don't believe. Uh, sir, I'm oh, sorry. I called for that, uh, Mr. Novak, and uh, rightfully so. It only needs to be done once. And I think anything on top of that would just be uh, disparaging or slowing down the process of what we have to do. Uh, we wanted to do this this evening, this, this gathering, because we have work to do at 7 o'clock. Uh, we are not grandstanding or showboating. We're here to take care of business as Council President has so eloquently and passionately did. And uh, when we're finished, we're just going to uh, wash up and move on with our business because that's what we're doing. Well said. And was the, is the mayor aware that you're making these statements tonight? I had spoken with the mayor. Um, he, whether or not he's aware of the press conference this evening, I, I don't know personally. He does not communicate with us on a daily basis, uh, but he does communicate on Facebook. So um, he finds it prevalent not to speak with us so, to be quite honest, I figured I would address this with the press. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, sir.